Well, women in senior leadership positions in South Africa have had an interesting year in 2012. Maria Ramos is under fire, Absa Cynthia Carroll resigning from Anglo-American. And just this week, Wendy Lucas Bull has been appointed as the chairperson chairwoman of Absa, according to a research report from global consultancy firm McKinsey. Women are taking up an increasing number of executive positions across the globe. And Finweek Simona Levitt and Jessica Hubbard want to ascertain exactly why this is. Uh, women are playing bigger contributors in business. Joining me also on the line to discuss this further is uh, Mary Ovenstone, who's an executive coach. Uh, so Mary, um, I'm hoping that this discussion isn't biased because we've got an all-female cast here, uh, but we'll try our best. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know that you've done some research uh, into the differences in female and male brains and how this affects the type of decisions they make in, in business and of course leadership positions. Uh, what were your key findings there? Um, Great. Um, I'm delighted to be here, and I, I actually am not biased. Um, I think men and women should be thinking together and making decisions together. That's what is my final conclusion. But how I got there is through four years of research into the difference between the male brain and the female brain. And actually, it, fundamentally, there's only an 8% difference between the male brain and the female brain. Um, there are 100 differences and counting that, that uh, neuroscientists have found. But just to put that in context, there's only an 8% difference between the chimpanzee brain and the human brain. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a, a huge difference, actually, effectively, between the male brain and the female brain. So let me just run through very briefly, very, very briefly, a few of the conclusions that, that I have uh, come to. First of all, I'll talk about the male brain in the business world. There, um, and remember that the male brain has created the business world. Um, it was designed by men for men, and they've been doing it for, you know, a few hundred years. Um, so, in the business world, um, we see a lot of competition because the male brain uh, automatically goes to, a, to competition. And there's a huge need I for, for men uh, for a stable hierarchy. They want to know where they stand in the pecking order, and they'll jostle and jockle and t jostle with each other until they find the right, their position in, in that pecking order. The second thing, of course, is aggression. Um, uh, their, their, their activities are much more aggressive than you would normally associate with, with women. Um, there's a, uh, in the male brain, there's a logical left brain bias, and there's much less information um, that the male brain uh, receives from the right hemisphere, which is where we process emotions and and all sorts of other things, much smaller um, input from the right hemisphere in the male brain. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that they drive, the male brain drives towards um, expedient, logical problem solving in their decision making process. So there's this huge drive towards, uh, towards a quick solution to things. Okay, now that's just a, a, a rough outline. Men are wonderful with logic and abstract thinking, and, and that's what, of course, they require uh, in the business world. Okay, the female brain, in contrast, is <clears throat> much more collaborative. Um, women will share information readily, um, which, is, uh, which characterizes their style of leadership. Um, they have less need for status in the hierarchy, but they want to achieve a position in order to, of course, make more money, but also in order to be heard and in order to make a difference. Women are very driven by the need to make a difference in whatever it is that they do. Um, their brains have an innate ability to observe others' faces, their reactions, and their behaviors, and to derive greater understanding, and to make greater meaning from others' behaviors. Uh, and of course, you know, that, that makes good sense. Um, uh, so far in the business world, uh, worldwide, there have yep. been many more HR directors that are female. They incorporate a much wider range of information in decision-making processes, um, and even if they come to a similar conclusion, it'll be have greater nuance to it, and it will incorporate um, uh, human elements to it. Uh, they have an innate ability to mentor others. After all, they've been raising kids for since yep. the beginning of time and they have a br greater capacity to manage people and processes in the workplace.
think what's interesting is that what women face is that a, what's called a double bind. So exactly the characteristics um, that she's described, if a woman acts in line with those typically female characteristics, she's actually viewed as incompetent. Yeah. So for example, Always. if she's collaborative, she tends to be called indecisive. That's right. However, if she acts in a typical male way of leadership, then she's viewed as not feminine. So for example, I mean, it was interesting to look uh, when Saab Governor Marcus was talking um, to look at the Twitter feeds and there were comments about the fact that she wasn't wearing makeup. Here's one of the most competent women in South Africa yeah. and she's being criticized because she's not wearing makeup. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it has to be about changing the perception that women's style of leadership is mm -hmm. innately different and mm -hmm. that as women we have to be very, very flexible mm -hmm. in adapting to moving into more male stereotype forms of leadership and being comfortable still with maintaining our female types of leadership. Yes, I, I, I think the women in South Africa are very much in the same position that I was in when I had my corporate career in Toronto 20 years ago and 15 years ago. Um, we all felt we needed to think like men, act like men, compete with men, until eventually we got into positions of you know executive level positions and we were able to influence the environment around us to create a more female friendly environment that allowed us to be more collaborative but I think the key to the whole thing as you said though is to be able to think like women think manage like women manage but to be able to communicate with men in in the way that fits into their understanding of the world so we have to be able to communicate with logic reason um, come across as practical and in many of the ways that, that make them feel comfortable in order to be heard and in order to have an influence in this country. Yes, Mary, I think you touched on a great point earlier when you said we're operating in a business world that has been essentially designed um, and created by men. Yeah. So how do we as women start creating a, a business world that is also influenced and engineered not only by men but by ourselves as well so that our points come out as strengths yes. um, and are interpreted as strengths and assets not as Simona pointed out as weaknesses because we essentially need to re-engineer a lot of the perceptions and the ways of of working um, in business. Yeah well I think I, a lot of that stuff is going to work out over time as it has in Canada which has, is ranking very, very well, very highly now. But they started, I know when I was there in the 90s, they were starting to put quotas in place. The government put quotas in hiring women in place. And, you know, the men were all railing against it at the time. But now they're incorporating women on higher and higher levels, and there's a, an easy collaboration between men and women. Yeah. And I think eventually that will happen here. But I can remember sitting in, in uh, management, you know, exco meetings. In, in Canada, and, and the women then were struggling to be heard. They were being ignored often, and that which is one of the biggest complaints that women have in South Africa is that men interrupt them uh, at, at, while they're in the middle of explaining something and, and will drive over the top of what a woman has to say mm. towards this kind of expedient, mm. 